4.5 billion years ago, Earth was struck by another planet in a collision that created the moon. But what if another planet struck us today? You've got ring particles showering down over the entire planet. That's a disaster in and of itself, let alone everything else that's coming. It would be like a rainstorm. But now imagine that each raindrop is a meteor. Solar systems are not static. And so over time, a planet can get kicked out due to the gravitational tug of war from other planets wandering the cosmos without any home star anymore. And that's what makes it rogue. There are maybe twice as many rogue planets wandering between the stars of the Milky Way than there are actual stars in the Milky Way itself. But another collision between a rogue planet and Earth, like the one over four billion years ago, can have only one possible outcome for humanity. Serious, serious disaster. That rogue planet is coming, approaching us. But its gravity arrives first. Coming in at 72,000 miles an hour, the rogue planet is now 250,000 miles away. Its intense gravitational pull has just ripped the moon apart. People from China to South America run for safety, to basements, bunkers, and old bomb shelters, stockpiling as much food and water as possible. Then, in an instant, TV sets all over the world go black. The rogue planet is now so close, its gravitational pull has thrown communication satellites into disarray. GPS satellites have also been hurled out of orbit. Having disrupted satellites, the rogue planet starts to make the Earth shake. Gravitational forces are pulling on the rock of the Earth and are causing tectonic activity. The earthquakes start small and they start subtly. In San Francisco, windows rattle and tall buildings sway. Tremors roll through Los Angeles. Quakes also rumble through the country from Denver to Boston and across the Atlantic to the streets of Rome. As the Earth shakes, another threat arises. The rogue planet's rings made of billions of pieces of ice and rock, are about to strike the Earth. In their direct path, hundreds of millions of people across the continents of Europe and Asia. Shanghai, pulled by the rogue planet's gravity, the Huangpu River has surged over its banks. The floodwaters tremble as earthquakes shake the city. Emergency crews struggle to help. Then, above the city, in a sudden silent explosion, the black of night turns to day. The rogue planet's rings have hit the atmosphere. Air friction makes the particles explode into flame. It's what happens when any asteroid or meteor enters our atmosphere. But now, there are hundreds of millions of them. You'd see a tiny dot in the sky that grows in brightness in less than a second to the point that it's overwhelmingly blinding. Millions try to flee the rain of fire and terror from the sky. The mass murder of planet Earth has begun. It would be like a literal rainstorm. You would have that many things coming in. But now imagine that each raindrop is a meteor. If you're within even 100 miles, you'll get burns. Then the shock wave hits, a pressure wave that would shatter windows and knock over cars. And that's only one fragment. And all the while, as the rogue planet gets closer, the winds get stronger, and the Earth keeps shaking. So as we're going through the ring plane, 
All of this is taking place in the background of a steadily mounting earthquake. So it's not the same as what you see in Hollywood. It's actually much more devastating. The rogue planet is now less than 30,000 miles away, so close that its immense gravitational force is placing an impossible pressure on the very structure of our planet. The amazing amount of gravity pulls on the rock, and that causes an astonishing amount of friction and heat, and that, in turn, creates volcanoes. There are more than 1,500 volcanoes on Earth. Now, from Washington State's Mount St. Helens to Mount Shasta in California to Pele in Martinique and Mount Fuji in Japan, volcanoes don't just erupt, they burst apart. Deep groundwater is suddenly heated up and flashed to steam, and that explodes or like what we call a pyroclastic volcanic eruption. You've literally got elements turning into gases and trying to escape while they're inside the rock. It's not something that you can stand back and watch from a distance, because even in the distance, there's terrible catastrophes unfolding. And so the atmosphere, the water, the cities, the land, the continents, the entire Earth are all being destroyed at the same time. Finally, the pull of the rogue planet's gravity is so strong, Earth can no longer hold its shape. And so the Earth would degenerate into a meteor storm that's falling and burning up in the atmosphere of this other world. The remains of Earth, now nothing more than cosmic debris, barely make a ripple in the rogue planet's atmosphere. The light from the destruction takes several minutes to travel to Mars, where a robot rover takes a few pre-programmed photos of Earth. These are the last pictures that will ever be taken of our planet. Almost four billion years after life on Earth began, the last people are gone. But is it possible something from our world could still survive. There may be some pieces of bacteria living in those little bits of rock before being completely vaporized. And some bacteria on Earth are pretty hardy and can live in some pretty extreme environments. It's maybe conceivable that some little bits of bacteria might survive this. One day after the destruction of Earth, the rogue planet continues through space as though nothing happened. But scattered throughout the solar system, there's still evidence that humans once existed. So we've sent probes across the solar system. We've sent probes out of the solar system. There's rovers on Mars. They would continue to function for a while until their solar panels stopped working, until their batteries run down. There's a smattering of satellites that were orbiting the Earth. And that's it. That's our legacy. But there might be one other possibility. In an event like this, when the Earth itself is ripped to shreds, the only way for humans to survive an event like this is to become a multi-planet species. The old Orion Project is probably our best bet to survive. Project Orion was a U.S. Air Force program from the 1950s and early 60s to create spaceships big enough to start colonies on distant worlds. Powering these enormous ships into deep space would take a controlled series of over a thousand small-scale atomic explosions. Recent Freedom of Information Act requests have revealed that the Air Force made it quite a bit farther than I think people understand in developing the Orion program. The idea went so far as to undergo practical tests at the Nevada test site. They used conventional explosives to take a model and prove the system would work, and it did. While Project Orion was canceled in 1965, its legacy provides the only hope that humanity could survive the deadly rogue planet. 
that uh, if we had fair warning, say a couple of years before the impact of a rogue planet that looked like it was going to be likely, I could definitely see a scenario where you have a very big push, humanity's last gasp, to create a very large spacecraft. The Mayflower of the stars take enough people that could actually start a colony somewhere else. I think it's important to stress that the idea that we can escape the Earth and make a new start elsewhere is a very unrealistic hope.